Hi, my name is uh, Daniel Trümper. I work at uh, Retresco. A very short note on Retresco. We are doing or developing search applications and um, doing or have a large background in natural language processing. And um, our main customers are in the publishing sector. And we're partner of Lucid Imagination. But what you are here for is Zero MQ. Um, so the question is, what is Zero MQ? Um, and Zero MQ is it's not a server, it's not a message queue in the traditional way. A traditional way meaning, um, as with Rabbit MQ or say uh, Active MQ, you have a somewhat centralized architecture uh, where you have. Um, more or less a uh, central daemon um, that you, um, manages all your queues and you have um, bits and pieces of your code talking to the, uh, to the server. Um, and this is not what 0MQ is. 0MQ um, instead is um, a distributed architecture, so you have no central queue. Basically, each piece of your code that wants to talk to each other, uh, to each other has a socket-style API. And um, yeah, and it's very loosely coupled. Um, so basically, zero MQ is a message queue. Uh, sorry, it's a messaging library. You can uh, think of it as a concurrency library. Library, so it has uh, some features, as uh, for example, in Erlang, the uh, message passing. It is uh, very small. Um, actually, the core is just about um, 16 or 18 methods of C++, and it's extremely fast. Uh, I won't go into the number stuff, uh, too many variables there, um, but there is a, a page on the website um, where you can see how fast it really is. Um, uh, as, I, as I said, it's written in C++, so it has, it has many language bindings. Um, I will be using the Python binding in my example, but there are, there's a binding for Node.js and for Java and more or less any language that uh, you commonly use. Um, the main user of ZeroMQ at the moment are, um, are banks. Um, they have uh, real-time trading systems that run on top of ZeroMQ. Um, we at Getresco, we're using it for basic work distribution at the moment. So we have a crawler and distribute the crawling work during, using ZeroMQ. And yeah, so with ZeroMQ uh, you get these three basic uh, messaging patterns. You have a request and response, so you have uh, some client and uh, you want to request stuff from any number of servers. You have a um, publish-subscribe model that's basically like, um, I don't know, you have a weather sensor on, top, on, your top, on your roof and it publishes weather data and then you have uh, many, many clients listening or subscribing to this data and um, doing all kinds of anal analysis, for example. And you have a push-pull pattern. This really is a, um, a pipeline pattern. So basically, you just forward a message um, from A to B. Um, each of these patterns map to zero MQ socket types. So there's a socket type for request, there's a socket type for response, and so on. Yeah, and um, it's really easy to program, and examples are always the best, and I hope they work. <laughs> Um, so, okay, this is an, the first example is a very basic um, uh, request and response. So first we will cre uh, we create the worker uh, and using Python. And um, we start with, um, with a 0MQ context and from this context um, we create a reply socket. Then we bind this reply socket uh, to this 0MQ URL. Um, ZeroMQ itself uh, has several tra transports available. The IPC transport is um, on Unix systems, it's a named pipe, or it's a Unix socket. Um, there's no Windows support for this right now, but they are developing it. Um, so yeah, so we bind the socket to this, to this Unix socket in this case. Um, the real work is this never-ending loop where we simply uh, receive from, from the socket and in this case, uh, the, the receive method is uh, blocking. So until there's no message available, this code is doing nothing. Then um, we simply print the request. 
wait for half a second and uh, send the request back to the uh, to the client, which is coming now. And it's basically the same code. Um, we again have a zero MQ context. Then we have a, a, a socket, and in this case, we create a re request socket. And we're not binding, but we're connecting to this endpoint. And again, in the loop, um, we just send the hello world message to the uh, to the socket and print out the, the receiver. Okay, and now uh, I hope this is a live demo. Okay, let me see. Okay, he will start the cell, and as you can see, it is simply waiting. And then we can start a first client. This is basically the same code as on the slide, small adoptions for readability. And you can see we, we receive the answers from the, from the server. And we can also easily start another client, and then again, both clients get served. Um, as you can see, um, ZeroMQ uh, uh, internally does a fair queuing of your requests. So um, basically it does round robin uh, from all your incoming connections. And we'll stop that here. Yeah. Ha, that worked. Okay. Um, what is the message in ZeroMQ? Um, basically in ZeroMQ um, you only have a string. So you're only sending a string message from A to B. Um, what you put in this string is up to you. You can put, I don't know, what usually people do is put JSON or, or Thrift serialized objects in there. Um, but um, the takeaway is that ZeroMQ is not doing nothing to your message, so it doesn't parse or analyze it. Uh, it just trans transfers the bytes. Then there is a... Um, a second type of message, it's a multi-part message, um, where you can f uh, uh, combine several frames of the simple string method, uh, string message to, uh, to form a single message. Um, the initial use case for this was, of course, streaming. So um, you want to transfer a file that is larger than your memory, then you want to stream the, the stuff. But uh, right now, what what people are mostly doing with multi-part multi -part messages is um, they do um, all kinds of routing of, your, of their messages, which leads us to um, the zero MQ architectures. The problem with the first example, of course, was that we only had one server, and if the server crashes, then my application is gone. Um, so that's not very cool. Uh, so our goal is um, we want to separate concerns in this case. We want a, a what is called a fixed part. This is uh, the messaging layer and all the routing logic. And we, uh, the fixed part um, really has to be as dumb as possible uh, with respect to your real application. And then we have the dynamic part, um, which is your actual application code that should scale if, if, uh, if possible. And um, this is what devices are for. So um, in the next example, um, we will create a very simple, um, least recently used queue. Um, so basically, for example, you can think of this being a crawler, a, the, the central point or the, the uppermost point um, is just firing out messages saying, yeah, please download this URL. Then um, maybe you want to um, um, scale your downloading processes across, I don't know, nodes and whatever. And then again, you might have a single point um, being duplicate detection, for example. And again, you might want to uh, um, have many processes doing uh, link extraction. So in the next example, we'll start by, by creating the workers. Um, again, this is pretty easy. Um, we start again with a, a context, a zero view context. Then we create a request socket in this case, and we connect the the worker uh, to a certain endpoint. In this case, the TCP um, transport. Uh, and then we send a ready message to the queue, indicating that we're ready to to work. 
or to do some work. Uh, and we, um, in this case, we receive a multi-part message. Um, in the Python binding, multi-part messages are simple, are simple lists or arrays. And uh, the, what we will receive from the queue is a client address, then an empty message part, and the actual request. And again, we simply print the request, sleep for half a second, and send uh, the, the multi-part message, uh, or send a, send a multi-part message as response, um, where the first part of the message is the client address, then an empty, uh, empty part, and uh, a response string, whatever. Okay, next bit is the, um, the actual queue, the, um, the least recently used queue. And in this case, um, we will create two sockets, um, one being the front-end socket, this is where the clients will connect to, and one being the back-end socket, where um, the, the workers connect to. And in this case, both sockets are of the router, router socket, um, basically, this is an asynchronous version of the reply socket. And instead of directly uh, calling the receive method on the socket, which would block, um, we are using a poller, a zero MQ poller, which is basically an event loop on both um, so uh, zero MQ sockets. And uh, we register the front end and back end um, socket with the poll in event. That means uh, we have a message ready on the socket. The actual code of the queue is just these few lines. Um, at first, we will poll on the poller, and again, this will block until there's some uh, message available, either on the back end or on the front end uh, socket. Then we check if uh, if the message uh, if uh, there's a message on the back end socket, and we receive the uh, multi-part stuff. Um, and in this case, what you can see the last three message parts are exactly this, uh, the multi-part message that the worker sent. And um, the first two parts are added by this uh, router sockets. In this uh, case, the worker address being the address of the actual worker that connected. Yeah. Then we simply uh, add the worker to our list of workers. And um, we only check if the client address is the ready message because um, in the worker, uh, as you might remember or not, we send a ready message to indicate that we're ready to work. So in this case, we don't want to send any of that stuff back to a front-end socket. On the front-end part, we only want to uh, work on messages if we have workers available, because otherwise it would be useless, or you could send some kind of um, error code, whatever. And uh, again, we receive the message from the front end socket, um, and we are simply forwarding this message to the back end socket. Uh, yeah. And again, I hope this works. No. Okay, so we start the, the queue. And then we can start a worker. And we see we have a, the workers available on the queue. And then we could start a client. But let me go to this box here. And we receive messages from the client. And we can process them. And then again, we could create another client and have the worker work on both clients, as you can see, with their ordering again. And we could also start a new worker. So now we have one client, and it's working on both workers. Uh, okay. Okay, um, basically that's it from my side. Um, in the abstract, I said I would be talking about Mongrel too, but actually my talk was kind of streamed, so I'm not covering Mongrel 2 right now. Um, 
I can tell a few things about it. Uh, basically, Mongrel2 is a um, mapper of HTTP request and response messages to ZeroMQ messages. So you can write your backend, your web backends um, using ZeroMQ architectures and all the scaling stuff, which is kind of nice. And um, yeah, so do you have any questions? Yes, please. For the uh, multiplexing, is that would that be the preferred mechanism if you had a bunch of events that you wanted to sort of uh, send um, in a batch? Uh, let's say that you're uh, sending messages that are uh, lines in a uh, web log or something yep. of that nature. Uh, rather than having a discrete message for each and every one of them, it's usually preferable to bundle them up in some fashion, especially if you want to uh, to encrypt or not encrypt, but to compress them before going over the wire. Uh, is that a scenario that, that you have any experience with in ZMQ? Not personally, but um, I would guess the best best way of doing this using ZMQ would be to send each line or at least a bunch of lines in, in one message. So, yeah. So you take a bunch of messages and have them in a single multi-part uh, as, as frames within it? That's up, uh, yeah, basically that's up to you. You can do this. Um, that would be appropriate if you want to. Uh, no problem. You suggested uh, separating the transport from the application logic by having uh, dumb devices. Yeah. Uh, however, if one of the workers becomes unavailable, you'll need to time out at some point to uh, take it out of the, the backend queue. Um, how do you separate the timeout semantics for application timeouts versus transport timeouts? Um. This is, this question I think goes into this the the reliability um, sector. So basically, ZeroMQ doesn't um, doesn't promise you anything. So um, you send a message and you will probably receive it on the other part. Um, there are several patterns in the in the ZeroMQ guide that you can look up. Um, where where they are basically saying um, if you don't receive a response and then you know. Uh, specific amount of time, then just resend the message and uh, redo your query, for example. But there's no, no guarantees whatsoever in ZeroMQ itself. So it doesn't um, promise you complete reliability. But you can have reliable messaging. Yeah. Uh, another question. Then. Uh, have, in your experience, have you found uh, upgrade paths from going from a, a simple request response uh, pattern to uh, a device? Um, and have you have you actually worked through that, where it's a local a local system, and then you made it distributed, then you made it highly available? Have you worked through the growth of a system with the zero MQ, and do you have any experiences with that? No, actually, um, at the moment uh, we are only running a kind of small crawler using ZeroMQ, but um, scaling would be, uh, would be quite easy because uh, what you, all you have to do is uh, change the transport from, so let's say, IPC, uh, uh, the, the Unix socket to a TCP socket, and you can scale across several nodes easily. So, so it's a um, messaging layout, messaging framework that you built specific for each task that you have? Basically, yes. So I'm using ZeroMQ to create my, my own messaging system, so to say. Thanks. All right, more is the same question as before, but... Um, the, my question is related to the previous one. Uh, you said in the beginning that uh, the product ZeroMQ was used uh, for trading systems, uh, which is... Uh, which is an activity where uh, high availability and guaranteed delivery is very important. Uh, yeah. Do banks uh, work around the, the limitations of the product themselves too? Or uh, is, it, is there some, somewhere a uh, super product that uh, adds these features? No, basically there's, there's just ZeroMQ and um, 
what actually what the, the banks are using is more or less all um, um, documented on the website. Mm -hmm. So all these these uh, patterns they use um, are available for you if you. Okay, so they re-implement it uh, in their own way, I guess. Every time. Yeah, kind of, but yeah, it's just um, very simple messaging uh, pattern, and I'm running out of time. So. Last slide, um, CMQ in the web. Um, the code is on GitHub. It's, there's a web page, and um, there's the excellent guide, CMQ guide, um, where you can also find all these, all the messaging patterns um, that are used. And my example code will be on GitHub too. Thanks.